everybody. How's it going? Can you guys hear me all right? Too loud? Too soft? Anything like that? Fantastic. All right. So we're going to have some fun with some games today. It's going to be a good time. I finally got tired enough of uh, Windows and uh, their shenanigans of like just trying to kind of push me into what I, you know, what they wanted me to do. That, uh, yeah. I was like, screw it. <laughs> I moved over to Gen 2 Linux now. So, this is running on my desktop. And you know what? I tried this about a year, year and a half ago. And uh, it was pretty okay, but there was some things that were kind of blockers for me. And I just uh, d couldn't, didn't want to get along with them. And, uh. Now uh, it works pretty good, actually. So I'd like to kind of show show folks uh, kind of what's up. So I'm on the uh, IRC uh, channel, and uh, and the uh, YouTube channel. Let's see. One thing I do need to figure out in KDE is if I can get it to uh, do the uh, focus follows mouse. I'll have to look at that. window behavior. That's the one I want. Yeah, there it is. Let's see. KD Docs. Pretty fantastic. Well, this one's actually pretty good.
So, I might uh, start the streams at uh, 7 p.m. next time, just because uh, it's kind of awkward hanging out, talking to myself. Um, I am chatting on IRC, and uh, I'm hanging out in Jack's Lug and Gen 2 and Debian. Um, so, maybe next time we'll start at 7, because gotten pretty good at OBS and whatnot. Uh, one cool thing that uh, I've gotten working um, was the uh, the NVENC, it's the uh, NVIDIA encoder. And so what it's doing is it's using the encoder on the video card. Uh, and this is probably just native in Windows, I'm not sure. But uh, I was having problems with it in Linux. Uh, but I was uh, using the NVIDIA encoder to do the encoding for OVS or OBS. Um, this guy. This is OBS. And uh, it's what allows us to do the streaming. And so you set up your sources, all that kind of stuff. But uh, what you can do is in here, you can tell it the encoder, and this encoder is going to be like software x264, which does the processor, or a number of hardware ones. In this case, it supports NVENC. And, C. and uh, I had to recompile my NVIDIA drivers with the NVENC, or the, um, what was it? Like UVF or something like that. Let me look. So UVM. Uh, UVM is it basically allows the processor and yeah, there you go, unified memory kernel module. It allows sharing of memory between the CPU and the GPU and CUDA programs. And so apparently this encoder is a CUDA program and it has to ship that material via this memory sharing. And so I wasn't able to get it work until I re, uh, redid it with that. So it, it installed, uh, I think, uh, OpenCL, um, like one other thing, and then recompiled uh, the NVIDIA drivers with this uh, support. This is one of the reasons I love Gentoo. It is more difficult to do a lot of stuff in Gen 2, but you learn it better. Now I understand a little bit more about how CUDA works, and how OVS works, and how hardware encoding works, just because I'm using Gen 2, and I had to figure it out and understand what was going on and why it wasn't working. So. I got wobbly windows too. Woo! I remember when this came out back in forever ago. Uh, and uh, it was pretty hard on my little my little terrible laptop that was running a uh, Celeron. <laughs> it didn't it did not like that. But I mean that's before like you had discrete graphics and stuff too, so it was just running off of the it was just running off of the uh, the default little probably Intel graphics card or something or other. Actually, I did see um, they they have it in here still. Let's see where is it. I didn't turn it on because I do remember that, and I remember it being terrifyingly bad, but it was also because my UI was lagging, so 
I mean, maybe it would be alright now, but I don't really have, feel the need for it. It was somewhere in here. Let's see. No, it's not there. KDE has gotten a lot better with their flow and their footprint and everything. There it is. Desktop effects. It, and desktop effects, I saw it. I've been turning on and off some stuff. Oh, I found this other thing. Cool cool thing too. I'm going to use this during the presentation. Mouse mark. If you hit uh, meta and shift, you can draw. And then you can draw over here and stuff just like you would in Zoom. And then uh, you just hit meta shift F12 to get rid of the last one and F11 to get rid of all of them. So that's pretty cool. Um, you can turn on and off all kinds of stuff like touch points. Uh, you have seen that on like a uh, phone, like on Android, you can turn on touch points in the developer menu. So probably, I don't know. Oh wait, now you apply it. I don't know. So let's see. Yeah, there's magic lamp. So that's the little like, uh, Yeah, it's that, that effect. That's the, the the Mac effect, I guess. And then this is the default. This is the squash. Yeah. See, they're they're different. Oh yeah, mouse mark uh, is. For, I'm I'm hoping to use that. I, I turned it on, and you can actually configure it too. Uh, so you hit this little guy, and uh, it, the default is red, but you can change the width. Uh, you can change the color. Um, go in here and and change like. Um, the shortcuts, alternative shortcuts, the globals, you know, all that kind of stuff. So that's pretty cool. And then there's um, this is this is neat. Uh, I turned it off because you know, eh, I, might, I don't know. I might leave it on. It's it's kind of neat. So uh, let's say you you open up a a console and you close it, it explodes. <laughs> so I thought that was cute. Doesn't fall apart as opposed to just more exploding. Um, wobbly windows. I turned that on. You can configure that too. You know, more wobbliness. <laughs> Way wobblier. But you know, effect keeps going. Now that does, uh, you know, impact your performance if you're not. Run I'm running on a desktop here, so this desktop is pretty good. It's my gaming machine, so. Um, if we go and look at some specs, actually there was a pretty cool, oh, what is it called? Uh, I've, I've forgotten what it is. But there was a uh, little command you could run and get a lot of like tidbits of information on your on your system, and I'm I'm sure it's on like most other um, boxes, but uh, it was very pretty. It wasn't a GUI or anything. It was just like something that people use. I've seen, eh, I've seen some. Um, some stuff that people use and it makes it look pretty and it's well not but uh, we'll just look at proc so cat proc CPU info one of the cool things about Linux by the way is um, you can get a lot of information just very readily about the system you just go in and be like hey I want to know this well there's the bugs that are uh, <laughs> on my processor right so it's just like oh here's your processor right and everybody's going to try to hack me, but here's me a processor, right? And uh, so it's got eight physical cores and all this kind of stuff, but it has the Spectre meltdown, well, at least the Spectre, and different uh, types of bugs, which is surprising because I thought that Spectre meltdown um, only affected uh, hyperthreading. It does have HT right here, which I believe is hyperthreading, but... Uh, this isn't a hyper-threaded uh, processor. It has, it has, um, it has eight physical cores, so it should be immune to that stuff. I don't know. <laughs> no, Proto said <laughs> that the Windows exploding is, is what's missing in his life. 
Uh, let's see. Uh, where was that other thing I was looking for? You can show FPS, so it'll actually give you a little... Well, it did it last time. I don't know what happened to it that time. Let's see, do we have three windows open accidentally? I was having some trouble with that before. Ah, da, 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 da. Yeah, get out of here. Didn't mess up the uh, stream. Let's watch the stream and see if it goes away. Hey, it's all right. All right, cool. Everything looks okay. All right, cool. So if I go back, go back into workspace behavior, desktop effects, and I'll turn that off, turn it back on, see if it shows up this time. There it goes. So it gives me my frames per second in a very hard to see format. I wonder if you can move that or change that. Uh, yeah. It was right. Yeah, well, it's not red, but it's certainly better than it was before. But yeah, you can see what's going on in there. You can see like this, these are a lot of these are uh, like phone options. I wonder if uh, Plasma. I think Plasma was potentially made for touch devices a lot, so a lot of the stuff you would find on like an Android phone or something. But uh, here's your cube animation that uh, you were uh, talking about. So desktop switching was a cube as opposed to like, you know, just sliding or just becoming the other side of it or something. Ah, apparently the search bar and settings, there's a quick filter. Yeah, so that's cute. That's pretty nice. Plasma bubbles a thing apparently, so yeah, that's probably why a lot of these things exist. Um, yeah, I turned off like all the screen edging and uh, touchscreen stuff as well, because I don't really want it to do stuff when I get to the edge of something. Uh, but you can configure all that as well. It's pretty nice. Like they've really done a really good job since the last time I used KDE, but the last time I used KDE was like probably at least 10 years ago. <laughs> so they've had, they've had time. NeoFetch. Let's try that. I think that is right. I believe that is right. Oh, it's got an X thing, too. Let's go look that up real quick. Let's make this a bit more bigger. <laughs> yeah, simple information system script. Yeah, that's the one. So let's see what our options are here. Magic. Seems like a lot for just a text thing. Ah, uh, it's because it's got to use X. So uh, again, right there, that's why Gen 2 is fantastic. I can do whatever I want. Like, oh, I don't like the, I don't need this to have a GUI. I just get rid of the GUI, and now it doesn't have any of the 
crap that had to come with it, like Image Magic, which is not on my system apparently, but um, it's on one of my other systems. Image Magic is great for like uh, using in a wiki. So MediaWiki uses Me Image Magic to do like the thumbnailing and different stuff. Mm, I don't need that on my system, so I don't have it. And so let's do let's do it as me. Yeah, there we go. Isn't that cute? I like that. So, gives you a pretty good little synopsis of the system. Yeah, I need to put that on my, my Etsy issue or something. So that's pretty cool. Apparently you can embed pictures into it too. That's neat. Very noir. If anybody wants to join us on IRC, we're hanging out there as well. Um, I'll take. I'll try to take a uh, a look at the uh, YouTube chat uh, once in a while. Um, but we'll get started here in a couple more minutes. Uh, so today we're going to be playing with games. Uh, so that'll be a good time. IRC info is here. It's on Jack Slug's uh, uh, page. It's uh, we were on Freenode, and uh, we're on the channel Jack Slug. Uh, so feel free to uh, hang out and ask questions and find out neat stuff. I would uh, be entertaining you with music, but I'm sure that somebody at YouTube would take exception to that and tear the stream down or something. Oh yeah. Wine can be a pain in the butt. And that's why we have these other programs. They're pretty fantastic. So uh, a little bit about my system. Um, this is running Gentoo, and we have this nice little NeoFetch. Uh, this is running Gentoo. Oh, NeoFetch you can get on other operating systems. Uh, it's just a package, and you just install it, and it'll you can configure it and do whatever you want with it. But uh, just like all these programs, I'm choosing Gentoo because I like it, and I like the configurability, and I enjoy a challenge, and I learn a lot more about the system. Uh, but you can do pretty much any of this uh, with Debian or Ubuntu or Mint or Fedora or um, probably Slackware. Like you, you can do it with most, if not all, of them uh, through some amount of configuration and uh, and poking around and, and making things happen. Uh, a lot of times uh, for a more modern system, like um, I'm running a, a RTX 2080 with a newer processor and, and, and newer motherboard and stuff. You want something that's not an older distribution. So a lot of times like with Debian, uh, Debian has gotten a lot better about uh, its stable. But uh, for a long time, Debian stable was ancient. And uh, you, you know, if you put it on a laptop, and all of a sudden, like you don't, you don't have wireless drivers or like <laughs> stuff like that. Where like, uh, <laughs> and you have to sit there and do um, cross compiling and get things, you know, kind of ham handed into the system and make it work. Uh, that's one of the things that's that's pretty nice about Gen two is it stays really new. And uh, a lot, a lot of times, I would actually run Debian uh, testing or even unstable as my primary system. Uh, because that would be like I'd have to fix stuff sometimes, um, and and like uh, Mint offers something like that too, where you can run uh, the newest patches as opposed to ones that are um, like locked down for stability and stuff. So you can do that in a lot of these distributions, where you can run on like a testing type of thing, or run a little bit hotter, or run more on that edge than you know the the really stable. But do be prepared to try to fix things. Um, because things might not work always. So, 
So uh, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and start the meeting. So I'll start recording. If it will. Uh-oh. I have not tried to stream and record at the same time. Oh, wait, let's see. What's going on here? Do, 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 do. Hmm. Well, let's look it up real quick. should be working. That's very strange. Oh well, um, let's see. The stream is DVRing on YouTube, so that's uh, potentially what people are going to get, which is unfortunate. Let me, uh, I'll stop the stream for just a second. I'm going to see if I can start recording, then start streaming. And if that doesn't work, we'll just continue with the stream and see how it goes. Well, I can't stop streaming either. Something is wrong. And I'm back. Uh, yeah, there was something amiss with, uh, with um, OBS. I couldn't stop streaming either, so I had to actually close the program. I mean, when you're running in Linux uh, and the programs are made for other operating systems, you're going to have problems once in a while. It's, it's kind of just what you're doing, dealing with it. Uh, but uh, it's part of playing around and having fun, right? So uh, go ahead and do my introduction. Uh, my name is Dan Beidelman. I am the uh, current president of the Jacksonville Linux Users Group, uh, which we are meeting remotely uh, nowadays because of the Rona. Uh, hope to meet in person again at some point, but that'll probably be next year at some point. Uh, today we're going to do some uh, gaming. We're going to play games on Linux. And uh, and not, I mean, there are a lot of really cool games that are like open source games and, and different stuff. But today we're going to be concentrating on games uh, that you would uh, generally play with um, like a whole bunch of friends, like very, very popular ones like uh, like Overwatch, Counter-Strike, uh, Seven Days to Die, all kinds of different stuff. And so we're going to look at uh, Lutris and Steam and uh, different stuff with that. So there's really two ways of playing a game in Linux, uh, specifically like a Windows game in Linux or something. Uh, those two ways are uh, through a directly compiled Linux binary, which is the best of all worlds generally. That's not always the case. Sometimes the Linux build that people create uh, does not work well. and the Windows binary uh, going through the second method ends up being better a lot of times, which is, or sometimes, which is interesting. Uh, so that process is uh, called uh, wine. And so wine is not an emulator. That's what, that's the cyclic thing that they came up with that. Basically, it's a Windows API that's been implemented inside of uh, Linux. Um, and it allows for people to uh, run Windows programs, or, well, not necessarily 
just in Linux, but you can actually use Wine on Macs as well. So you run Windows programs on a non-Windows uh, system. In this specific case, I'm running them in Linux. Um, so let's take a look at it. Uh, the couple of tools that we're going to be using today uh, are Lutris, Steam, and uh, that's primarily what we're going to be using. So Lutris is Lutris.net, and what it is is kind of a wine configure, configuration utility. It will build... Uh, people publish builds, and so let's say uh, let's say Overwatch, right? So I click on this Overwatch here, and people will actually build things that uh, will help you get the install working properly. Um, that, along with uh, Vulkan and uh, DXVK. Uh, offer a really good experience. Uh, Vulkan is a project that aims to get, I believe, DirectX 12 uh, type programs to be um, able to phase uh, between uh, different platforms. So Mac, Windows, Linux, Android, iOS, a whole bunch of stuff like that. And so the idea is, is you would code for Vulkan and then you could deploy your game on everything and all the developers need on the OS end is to support Vulkan and then Vulkan then supports all the game stuff and so it does the layering and everything. So it's, it's, it's pretty, pretty neat. Um, but that being said, there's not, a, I believe, there's not official support for Vulkan in Linux as of yet, meaning that the, the Vulkan developers um, have not built that uh, for Linux specifically, so they're not really supporting it, but it does work for the most part. Um, I've played I played some Overwatch last night. I've played Final Fantasy 14 on this. I've played Counter-Strike. I've played all kinds of games. The only thing that does not work, uh, as far as I know, and I don't believe that they're uh, in the pipeline to get it working at all, is EAC. So easy anti-cheat uh, just does not work in Linux. And that means that like, if you want to play Insurgency Sandstorm, the game may run, but you won't be able to join any servers that have the easy anti-cheat enabled, which is unfortunate because I enjoy playing the game. I am not a cheater, but that means that I might have to go play with the cheaters if I wanted to play. And I, uh, I don't want to do that. So that might be relegated to uh, either our Windows um, dual boot on the system or uh, just firing up my own server and playing with my friends because, you know, it's a fun game. But uh, they decided not to try to support Linux, which is unfortunate. Um, the more people that use Linux uh, for gaming, uh, and this is another reason I, I went ahead and hopped over because I, I know Linux pretty, pretty well. Um, the more people that use Linux uh, for their gaming, the bigger the market share. And as the market share grows, then people will actually want to spend the development time to do it. Because I mean, I, when you're talking like you know 005 percent of the market share of like some game is Linux, then the developers are like, well. I mean, I'm going to code for the 99.5% of the people, and uh, I'll build a build system for that, but if it breaks, uh, I get around to fixing it, maybe. You know? Uh, so, with Lutris, we'll start out with uh, Lutris, and then we'll go over to Steam. So, in Lutris, what I've done here is I've installed uh, Final Fantasy, uh, which I've Play with some friends, and I've uh, installed Battle.net. So I went on to Lutris's site, and uh, you can install Overwatch or whatnot. And this, what what it'll do is it'll install the Battle.net client, and then you'll install it in there. So I was just like, well, I don't, I want to be able to install the other ones. I have not tried anything but Overwatch, but I've installed like uh, StarCraft 2 and stuff like that. 
So I haven't tried those yet. I hope they work. I mean, we can lo go look it up. Starcraft. Starcraft 2. And it's platinum. Installs and runs flawlessly. Fantastic. So that'll be great, right? So I installed uh, Battle.net. And uh, once you get it installed, you can um, go into configure and change a bunch of stuff about it. So you can tell it, like, you're, you're probably not going to want to change a lot of these things, but you can go in and, you know, tell it to use uh, DV, uh, DXVK, which is the, um, I think that's the Vulcan, or VK through D3D, I think is Vulcan. Um, DXVK is DirectX 11. Uh, and it's, so this is 11, this is 12, um, and then there's some other options. And a lot of times they'll, they'll have these set up more or less uh, the way that you want them. Uh, when you want to install something from there, what you can do is, uh, let's see, uh, we need a game that is, we can just install. I don't feel like uninstalling and then reinstalling stuff. So. Uh, Let's go find a free game. Let's see. They have a games thing, and then they have a little thing. So let's just say, uh, let's just say free, free to pay, open libre. Oh, sure. Let's just apply all those. Let's see. take a quick look. Uh, 22 pages of stuff. There's a lot of games on here. You can you can go and install. Again, these are not. Um, I don't believe Lutris actually. Um, supports the games themselves. I don't think that they actually go out and like pull the clients down and, and then provide you with it. I think what they're doing is they're just providing you with a configuration that works. Uh, so, yeah, here's Bethesda Launcher. Uh, so you can do a lot of things here. I want to show an install, but I don't kind of space it on something I would want to install with this with. Because I pretty much only use... Uh, well, let's see if there's Epic Launcher or something's on here. Yeah. There we go. Alright, so let's try this out. The market, one, one of the quips on the uh, <laughs> on IRC is what's the uh, market share on herd? <laughs> it's negative 1%. <laughs> it's a version of kernel that you can install on like Debian. Uh, it's not Linux. It's, I believe it's not Linux. I actually have never touched Herd. Uh, so yeah, let's install the latest. Um, it it just installs things in the games, but you can obviously do that wherever you want. You can view the source so you can see exactly what they're doing, which is really nice. So if you want to if you want to go through and be like, you know, what's this install script doing on my system? You can look because this is Linux, and that's cool. <laughs> so, I want to install. It goes out. It's in... Oh, actually, I think it, it did have a CDN from Lutris, so maybe Lutris does uh, host the files. Here, um, Wine is uh, building, and so it's, it's doing a configuration. Uh, so this is all kind of behind the scenes. This is Lutris is setting up Wine. It's installing the installer. It's getting everything kind of ready for us. It makes it a lot easier in a lot of cases. It has not been 100% perfect, but again, I'm running on Gen 2, and so I've got some weird stuff that I have to flesh out once in a while and be like, all right, why is it doing this? What's going on here? Blah, 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 blah. If you're running something like Ubuntu or, you know, uh, something that's properly supported, like uh, Steam's, I believe Steam's uh, Linux of choice is Ubuntu. So if you want just like, I want to run Linux to get away from Windows, and I want to run Steam, then likely it would be, uh, uh, Ubuntu would be your, your, your flavor of choice. And there are a bunch of uh, UI choices. You can, you can get... Pro probably get KDE, uh, like I'm running here. Uh, I'm sure you can get, like, GNOME flavors. I don't, I don't know it. Like, I don't really deal with Ubuntu very often, so. 
sorry, I'm just reading all well, the comments. Lots and lots of comics. Uh, Minecraft, yes, Minecraft does run natively in Linux. Uh, it's uh, uh, it's Java. So uh, actually, there's two versions of Minecraft now. There's the Windows 10 Minecraft, which I don't know if you can get that or not. Um, we can certainly look. Let's see. So the Java edition right here is the one that uh, just work. It should just work in Linux. It, it's Java. It's just a jar, and uh, we used to play it when we were when we were running the hackerspace a long time ago. We played it on Linux all the time. It ran great. Uh, in fact, really funny with Wine. Uh, this you guys will enjoy this story. Real quick, when we were in the space, we really wanted to play StarCraft. StarCraft 2 wasn't out yet, uh, but StarCraft 1 was from the 90s, so it was a ni Windows 95, Windows 98 game. And when we're sitting there running Windows XP and um, we could not, like Windows XP and I think Windows 7, you actually had to kill the uh, windowing manager of Windows. Uh, to get the game to run properly. If you didn't, then uh, the game would be in like reverse colors. Like everything would be reverse colors. It was insane. And so you had to kill, I think it was Explorer, Explorer.exe. You had to go into the task manager. You started a task manager, you brought it up, you found Explorer, you terminated it. And then using that that same, like that task manager UI, then you started StarCraft and it would start okay. And then you could play and then when you're done, you close StarCraft, and either you rebooted or you went and found Explorer and relaunched it. It was insane. Like what? This is a Windows program running on Windows. It's just a different version of Windows, and they cannot handle it. You couldn't do anything through the. Um, and they've long since probably fixed that since they came out with SC2 and they actually reworked all that kind of stuff. But you you had to do these weird tricks even though there was a compatibility layer that didn't work even though like all this stuff and it's just because like i don't know why they couldn't just build uh, things like wine right so we installed starcraft one with wine on linux and it ran better than it did on windows so get that that's some fun stuff right there all right <laughs> So this is kind of iterative. It gets better and better. As more and more people use it, they get better and better at building stuff. And like, there's certainly going to be levitations. There's certainly going to be things that don't work or are broken. But sometimes things are work better because there's not as much overhead or there's not squirrely things happening in the background. And you get to choose your own adventure. So it's a good time. All right. So uh, now it says, hey, I've installed the Epic Store. Uh, you can add these things. And it will add like a little... You know, it actually already did that, even though I didn't ask it to do that. But, uh, yeah. So if I want to launch, I can launch it, or I just close. And it should come up. I've not tried this before, so we'll see. Yeah, there you go. So, boom. I didn't have to do pretty much anything. I just installed Lutris. I got it, uh, I got it running. I got Wine installed and running. I got my... Um, my NVIDIA drivers, now that's an important thing. Is if you want to do gaming on a Linux box, the video card drivers that come with um, with Linux are open source. And they are really good. But because the uh, card vendors do not release a lot of their stuff except for as uh, binary blobs, we can't get the efficiencies in the 3D space that the binaries have. And so if you want to do a gaming on a lot of these machines, you'd be wise to probably install either the AMD or the, uh, the NVIDIA uh, binary drivers, which is what I'm running here. Uh, they can be kind of frustrating and they are breaking, like your system is no longer open source, kind of, because, well, I mean, you're, you're linking it in. You're not, you're not tainting the kernel. You're just loading a module in uh, but some people want to really 
have like a, a pure open source system and if uh, that's your case then that's kind of rough because you're kind of stuck with the, uh, the the good but not as efficient drivers um, like Novo and uh, the AMD equivalent. I've heard the AMD uh, open source drivers are better than the NVIDIA's but I've always found that both of them are kind of um, they, they don't work as good uh, usually but that being said they're very easy to install they're very easy to maintain uh, whereas the um, binary compat or the binary versions of the other ones not so great at doing the uh, main maintaining and they can be really kind of weird and wonky uh, the Nvidia ones as of late have been pretty good actually um, I haven't had any problems like I've had in the past with Nvidia so that's good all right so that's how you install uh, a game in Lutris let's go uh, let's go play one so we'll fire up uh, battle.net and it's got all of my stuff uh, installed in there. Uh, for Fedora, uh, there was a question in IRC. Uh, Fedora, yes, uh, you should uh, be able to run all of this same stuff. Um, as uh, I said earlier, You, this is all open source stuff. So it's all um, code that's available to you. Even if it's not packaged, you could compile it yourself. Uh, but likelihood is that Fedora has a very thriving um, uh, system of builds for Lutris and Steam and all that kind of stuff. Uh, all you have to do is just look it up. Um, like I'm, I'm running Gentoo. Gentoo is literally compile everything. And there's people in the Gentoo community that support this. And, you know, on the forums, on the bug uh, systems and everything, they're like, oh, well, uh, Debian broke this thing upstream because you're using Dash instead of Bash, and so we had to do this, so here's a patch until we can figure this out, and you go and you run that patch and you do everything, and it's good. But that's going to be way over some people's heads, so like, if you really want a challenge, go for an alternate system. Like, you know, do it on Gentoo, do it on Fedora. Like, if you're enjoying it, you like Fedora better than you like Ubuntu or whatever, then, like, go for it. Like, learn that system, learn it better, you know, get your hands dirty, play around with it. That's what Linux is all about, is learning and having fun and, and nerding out, you know? And uh, so, yeah, I'm sure it will work on Fedora. I'm sure this will work in Debian, uh, Ubuntu, um, Slack, you know, whatever. Um, so, I got the launcher. Now, this launcher is running in Wine. All right, this is not a native launcher. This is a Windows thing, but you can see it's actually, it's getting the alpha blending, so you can see through it. Um, and it's getting the wobbly windows and stuff, because uh, it's running on the system. It's just using um, the Windows APIs, but then it's still getting boosted by the video card, still getting everything running. Um, so hit play. All right, I'm in Overwatch now. Now, one thing I saw with Overwatch, and it seems to do, maybe it does this. Uh, Um, I saw it down here for just a second, but it was compiling the shaders. Um, and the shaders are uh, something that uh, the... Uh, basically, the, the textures, the lighting, all that kind of stuff, it has to pre-compile some of that on Linux. Uh, that was noted on the Overwatch page uh, for Lutris. And so if I go to... Uh, actually, let's not go to play. Let's go to training. Uh... Practice range. There we go. Uh, the one with the medic is... Uh, that's uh, Team Fortress 2, which is available in Linux as a uh, direct binary. And so, you know, you can see it's running really well, right? So you can sit there and, you know, people are moving around real good, and they're all 3D. And so, uh, let's just run around as junk rat and blow some stuff up. Right, so you can see, looking around, it's perfect. Right, this is a Windows game running in Linux.
and it runs fine. Here we right? go. So, yeah, that's uh, this is wine. Like this is where wine is at this point. It's fantastic. So I'll just go ahead and leave. All right. So that's kind of a uh, quick view of Lutris. So let's go on and look at Steam. Now I've noticed that Steam is having some issues with mine. I have to reset it once in a while, which is kind of strange. Um, I'm still trying to figure that out. And uh, the forum I had found that uh, encountered that because Steam worked pretty much flawlessly out the gate for the most part, but then I couldn't relaunch it. And then I found this error and I found a forum post and basically what they said is, hey, your Steam executable is corrupt. So you need to run Steam dash dash reset. It resets all of the profiles and stuff, wipes out the Steam binary, down, redownloads, allows you to redownload the Steam binary, re-log in, and you're good to go. That's pretty much the only problem I've had with Steam. I've had it twice now, so I, I'm not sure exactly what's going on there, but it's easy enough to get going again. You can see that I got Steam going on down here. And it looks just like the uh, Windows version of Steam. You have your store, your library, all your different stuff. I'm going to fire up the library. I've been playing this uh, Kingdom Classic and Kingdom New Lands. It's a fun little side-scroller builder game. A very simple game. Runs great in Linux. Um, you go into Manage on these. You go to Properties. And then you can, down here, you can actually tell it specifically how to to play the game, right? So in Windows, it just ends here, I believe. But in Linux, on your general, in a game, you can go into force uh, it to do some kind of other thing, right? And so this game is actually a Linux game, right? So they built a Linux binary for this. Uh, but if I wanted to play the Windows one, I could just do this pull down, and there's all my Proton options. And so these are different versions of Proton that the game has a configuration for and uh, can, you can try to run it in. And so if I chose one of these Protons, it would actually go download the Windows version of the game and then try to run it in Wine that's being powered by Proton. Proton is a, as far as I know, it's basically a, a patched version of Wine. They do a lot of uh, stuff to try to make the uh, 3D a lot better. Um, whoops. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, everything works pretty well in this as well. I've had some issues with Counter-Strike. Counter-Strike is actually a native game as well. Um, I was having some like uh, micro glitches uh, in the in the game, and I, I encountered this with uh, Final Fantasy too. If I don't run the game in full screen mode, I get like a little bit, like just a hair of latency once in a while. Like it'll be super great, and then I'll get like a little burst of latency and then it'll be super great. And it's just like, and it's almost imperceptible, the latency. And it's just like, what's going on? I'm not sure about that. Uh, so we'll, we can fire this up and it just installs just like everything else, right? You just install and it goes into the Steam directory, which is a um, hidden directory. And uh, we can fire this up. It's going to come up. All right. And then uh, if we go to... Where's just the bots? I just want to play with the bots. Ah. Training course. Uh, no, I want to practice with bots. Sure. But this is a Linux binary. So the uh, the Overwatch one was a Windows game running in a wine shell that is prepared for us by Lutris. This one, we're in Steam, using the Steam servers and everything, but they've compiled a Linux version of this game. And so this is a pure Linux version. This, is a, this will run very, very fast. Uh, I don't remember what the key is to get my, all right let's see it's not that i see the bomb carrier so, show FPS. So, yeah there the we go bomb. look how much free <laughs> i'm up in the 300s of fps now this is a uh, older game nowadays uh but 
a Linux compiled game is going to run really good, right? I lost them. So it's really fast. It's very agile. It's not it's not lagging on me at all. I can you know, move around. Everything is great. They've got the bomb. So, yeah, Counter-Strike works great. Uh, for the other ones, uh, like, again, like Factorio works fantastic. Avorion, that's another one. I don't know if a lot of people have played Avorion. I know uh, Travis has. It's fantastic. Uh, Avorion's a great little game, and it's a Linux binary as well. Uh, so you can you can build your own little ships and uh, go explore a, a procedurally generated um, universe and uh, build stations and fight pirates and all kinds of stuff. So again, this is a Linux binary game. It's not a free game. You have to buy it. You can play it on Windows. You can play it on Linux. Uh, but uh, whoops, I did all kinds of different commands and it did not like me. Let's see what did I get rid of the game or yeah I think I did. Nope. I think I basically did kind of an alt tab. Actually. But uh hey yeah, you can see it it's running great as well. And uh this is it. Good little game. Running on Linux. Uh just like you would on Windows, and uh, it's fantastic. It's like careening into this rock. Yeah. Okay. All right, good. Stop. <laughs> yeah, more out. Works fantastic. <laughs> As one of my friends pops in, oh, it's because it lost focus, and I was in uh, full screen mode. That's what's going on. Let's go ahead and just sign out of friends for right now. Sorry, guys. All right. So, Vorion works very fantastic, but it, again, it's a Linux binary. Uh, for one that's not a Linux binary, uh, actually, well, Seven Days to Die has a Linux binary. Portal has a Linux binary. Uh, a lot of these games have Linux binaries. It's pretty great. I actually tried one, and it was a little bit laggy. So, like, I'm, uh, yeah, it was a uh, near near automata. This one does not have a Linux binary. So this is a Windows game that will be running in Proton. Um, and you'll see what I what I'm saying. Like, it is. Uh, I actually did force this to run on a newer version. I can just uncheck that. You have to update it whenever you do it because it's it's in a Wine environment, and so it's going to be trying to. Uh, set up self up and that so it's actually gonna have to re start redo the setup and so this is what you see when you first initiate a game it's gonna do a setup and because this is a um, this is a Windows game that's running in wine in Proton uh, you can see that it's installing DirectX right so it's installing that in the wine shell um, and so what the game has done is it told it told Wine, it told Proton, like, hey, I need to ha install uh, DirectX. And Proton then installs it through its methods, and it says, hey, you're good to go, right? And that was just a Steam Sync thing saying it was unhappy about like me exiting the game earlier or something. So you'll see that it's not as good of an experience, right? It's not quite a hundred percent it's pretty close like it's there it's fun um, but it's a little laggy I'm running uh, this this game is running at um, about half the resolution that I usually run it at because I run an, I run a, a 2k screen here and the resolution that I'm getting on this game and being acceptable play is 1024 or uh, yeah so, near Automa, you, you play as a android, 
and you're going around killing other androids. Um, it's got this big story. It's a square game. But again, it's only Windows. Just like uh, Final Fantasy, it's only Windows. This one I have in Steam, so it's going to be using Proton. Uh, Final Fantasy XIV uh, has Steam, and I have it in Steam, but um, I went ahead and installed the client um, on uh, Lutris, and it works flawlessly. Leave me alone, jackass. I can't deal with your weird hobbies anymore. Like, I care what you think, jerk. So, you have your NPCs. And you can see it's a little laggy. It's not not the best at rendering. So it's just like maybe it'll get better over time. Uh, it might be a thing that uh, people just need to work on uh, the interface layer between Wine and that, or like we need to look at Proton or something like that and try to figure it out. But it's playable. It's certainly playable. But it's not. It's not nearly as smooth as the native games or some of the other games that have uh, that have wine. So you can see it's a little laggy. That's the experience you're going to get. It's not going to be 100%. It's going to be great on some games. It's going to be all right on others, and some games it might not even work at all. So, but for the most part. I found that uh, it works pretty much on almost 100% of the games nowadays uh, when I've gone and played around and, and, and messed around with stuff. So, Does anybody have any questions? Um, the uh, Linux game front is getting to be pretty good. And I mean, I've, I've actually, I've, I've rolled up over on the Gen 2 as my primary box. I actually have no Windows box. Well, my work box is not Windows for right now, but I have no Windows boxes except for that one um, running in my house anymore. And uh, last time I tried this about a year, year and a half ago, uh, I ended up switching back to Windows just because of uh, some pretty s significant issues that some of the games had had. And I'll tell you what, Lutris is fantastic. Steam is fantastic. And the um, interfacing layers that they have uh, been able to build and provide uh, even with the small amount of people that, you know, compared to the rest of the gaming industry, the small amount of people that, that use Linux, they have done fantastic things with these tools. And uh, it's really making it happen. And uh, I think a lot more more developers are seeing it and they're like, oh, okay, I can either just build this thing and use Proton and then maybe eventually if enough people use it, then I'll, you know, build a Linux binary or something like that. Uh, EVE Online, I have not tried to install that on, uh, on Linux. I'm sure it probably would work pretty well. I believe EVE actually might have a... Um, Eve might have a, a, a Linux binary. So when you go to a store page in uh, in in Steam, uh, you can go down and down here, yeah, they don't have a Linux binary. When you say play Eve online or buy or whatever, you have these little symbols. The little box is Windows. The Apple is uh, OS X, and there'll be a little tux here. And the tux means that it has a um, it has a a Linux version, right? Or a the reason they now is it a tux? I don't remember if it's a tux or if it's like a little Steam gear, because they they rebranded it. At one point it was a tux. I think they actually changed it. And now it's a little. Um, Now it's a little uh, gear or something for, for Steam Linux. Let's see. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Browse. I think they have it, but yeah, there we go. Steam OS and Linux. So Steam OS is basically, when they were trying to build a console, I think they were, they made Steam OS. So Steam OS is an actual operating system, I believe. I have not tried to install that before. But... Uh, Yeah, 
So you can actually build a SteamOS box. And so if you really like Steam and you just want to have a, a machine that is running a Linux box and you know, plays all the Linux games and it, you probably use it with like big TV setting or something like that. You can actually just go to Steam's site, pull that image and install it and do it yourself. Or you can actually buy SteamOS boxes. Oh, well, this, this is, this isn't the page to buy them. This is if you want to build them and sell them. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. And so th these are Steam games that are um, Steam OS games, and so if I just choose the first one here, it's kind of cat Mario thing. Um, you can see down here it's got the Windows logo, and then it's got the uh, the Steam logo. The Steam logo means it's a Linux game. Um, so now I don't know if that indicates if it's a binary Steam Linux game or if it's a officially supported Proton game. Uh, if you go to the Proton DB, you can actually see report on all the things that are used and how well they work. Now, the one that these two confuse me a little bit, <laughs> Counter Strike and Dota, because I'm pretty sure both of those have a Linux binary. So I don't know why people would be using Proton to run the Windows version of the game in Linux as opposed to running the Linux native game. I'm not sure. But, yeah, here it is. And so you can see uh, the different ratings that people have with stuff. So, like, uh, again, TD Fortress 2, that's another one that should, you know, it's, that's a, should be a Linux binary game. And, in fact, I'll show you the, uh, I don't think I have that installed, so. Uh, I just need to, there we go, yeah. So, Team Fortress 2, you just go, it's just like you would do with any other Steam game. You say, hey, I want to install this. You can do all this different stuff. You say next. It goes out and installs it. Easy peasy. So. All right. Okay, so I think that's... Uh, Yes, and Lutris does uh, support a Wine version of Steam. Oh, yeah, uh, <laughs> Lutris has a lot of options in it. It's a cool little program. Um, so this is basically just a configuration program, but you can say, like, I want the runner, and then you can install a lot of different runners. So these are the ones that cam came with mine by default, pretty much. So it says Steam, which I'd, I'm i assuming it means Proton, because it doesn't have Proton in there. But I guess it's running Steam inside of Wine or some kind of thing like that. I'm not sure. Uh, Linux. So I guess uh, what they're doing here is they're building kind of a client. So you can run different games that would run and you can just click on them. So you, you could have like a nice little UI. So this might be good for like kids and stuff uh, where you have like, you know, you set yourself up with like, here's all the games for the kid or something. And they could just click on it, and they don't have to be like, oh, yeah, i got to go to Steam for that one, or I have to go to the, the web browser for that one. They just click on it, and it just fires up whatever is going on. Um, and then you can actually... That's fine. Yeah. Whatever. Install runners. Uh, so there's a lot of runners in this thing. You can. There's emulators. There's DOSBox. MAME, so you could do like emulation in here, um, like some web-based games, and so there's all kinds of stuff you can do in here. There's Wine Steam, so I guess that's, you know, Steam for wine or something. I don't know if it's, I, I, there's not, uh, there's not Proton in here, so I, I, maybe that's Proton. Um, yeah, yeah, there's, <laughs> Redbar says, uh, there's you know, Vice apparently it plays the Commodore games that's uh lots of emulators and stuff in here so yeah you can build this whole thing up and uh get it running for you and uh works pretty good all right so i think that's uh that's pretty much it i hope you guys enjoyed the uh presentation and uh good gaming have fun. Thanks for coming out and watching. Uh, tune in next month for something else. 
if anybody would like to do a presentation, please let me know. Uh, we've had uh, one or two done by other people, but uh, I've been hosting it a lot because uh, it is um, kind of interesting technically sometimes. Uh, so... I don't mind running these, and I can just uh, keep doing random topics. If anybody wants to tell me a topic they'd they'd like to see, and if I feel like doing it, I may, may do that. Uh, otherwise, if we can have other people firing up uh, presentations too, that would be great. But I uh, hope to see you guys around at some point, and uh, you know, enjoy uh, enjoy what you can in life, and uh, have a good time. Play with Linux. Play with some games. And I will see you guys later. Have a nice day.